Good afternoon and welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning into our uh, one, another one of the uh, Micromatic Dispense Institute uh, draft beer quality uh, webinar sessions here. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, uh, beer uh, glass cleaning. I want to make sure that that glass is uh, cleaned and sanitized properly as well. Um, this is uh, the third in one this series of, of uh, webinars that we've done talking about draft beer quality. So uh, with that being said, let's get into this. Um, my name is David Green. I'm going to be the uh, uh, webinar uh, guru here today. Uh, I'm uh, part of the uh, Micromatic uh, Dispense uh, training team. I've um, been with Micromatic for uh, since 2001 uh, on the training team since 2006 as a uh, course instructor. We do all kinds of different uh, anything draft related uh, as well. So uh, I'd just like to say again, thanks for taking the time for us and, and uh, let's get into this. Uh, the the objective today again talking about uh, uh, beer clean glassware. Uh, boy, you know you, you get a great beer. Somebody has a great uh, of beer that you like, and you get it poured, and the glass just doesn't look up to snuff here, right? So we want to uh, just present some glass cleaning guidelines, uh, uh, best practices. You know we want to make sure that that uh, uh, beer meets the consumer's eyes and, and taste buds experience as as the brewery intended, right? So. Uh, you want to properly clean glass. Um, there's two different methods that are commonly used. We'll talk about both of those. Uh, again, we want to make sure we're, we're uh, we have some brewery clean glassware tests that you can perform to see if uh, uh, you or the establishment is cleaning properly. And then we'll talk a little bit about conditioning the glass with a glass rinser. And then we'll have hopefully some time for uh, questions at the end if anybody has any. So. Uh, with that being said, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type them into the chat box and we will uh, uh, get to those at the end of the presentation here. So a properly clean beer glass is it's, it's an extension of the draft beer system, right? Uh, uh, so if the system's great, if it's cold, if it's the right temperature flowing correctly, well, what is that beer going to go? It's going to go into that glass uh, it, as well. So it's just an extension of the system. Uh, as, as well. So, you know, we, we want to make sure that the system's working properly, uh, but then that glassware again, that's the uh, uh, what we re generally refer to as the, the final package, right? That's what the customer sees uh, to be able to do that. So I don't want to have any unwanted odors. I don't want any splotches or, or spots or, or uh, uh, bubbles clinging to the sides. You know, you'll see that a lot sometimes on improperly clean glassware. Uh, so only one, one thing that I am seeing more and more is uh, uh, what we refer to as etched or nucleated glassware that people do seem to like or breweries will put a logo and, and they are they're actually meant to create some bubbles. So we can talk about that as well too. But if I don't have a nucleated glass, hopefully there's there's no bubbles uh, on the insides or the sides or the bottom as well. Uh, another thing uh, I want to make sure that that if I have a, a, a nice foamy uh, head on the beer properly, I want to sustain that, right? Uh, seen it a million times where somebody will pour a good looking beer and the head just dissipates just just super quick and that sure sign of uh, some improper cleaning as well too. So um, what, what we're going to talk about today, is the methods are, are, this is exclusive to bar glassware, right? We're not talking about cleaning the silverware, cleaning the uh, uh, pots and pans and the dishes or, or coffee cups, right? So uh, two methods really very, very common out there. We have what's referred to as the manual washing system. Very, very common out there. Um, usually three, uh, three systems, uh, three sink setup, excuse me, um, possibly a fourth uh, sink as well. Uh, there are areas that, it, that it's actually code that the bar or restaurant must have a fourth uh, sink and that's usually referred to as a dump sink as well too. So. Um, we could have a funnel or, or some sort of an overflow tube that we can pour any residual uh, um, beer or whatever's left in the glass before we clean. Um, and then the, the brushes used for the manual, it's either going to be a motorized something, a, a mechanical uh, device that's placed in the sink and, and the motorized brush or a hand brush, very common as well too. Uh, then also once we get done washing the glass, we want to make sure we have a, the appropriate drying surface, a drain board, right? We, we want to uh, uh, make sure that that glassware has time to drain and, and uh, the sanitizer uh, to work. And then ideally we want to refrain from uh, uh, stacking or freezing the glassware. That can be uh, damaging to the glass as well. 
the second uh, type of washing that we'll go over would be automated or machine washing, right? There's a, what we refer to as a, a low temp uh, dishwashing machine that, that uses soap and a sanitizer. And then there's a high temperature machine that is going to use a, a soap, of course, but then it will use a high heat for the actual sanitation uh, and the hygiene of the glass. So uh, we'll talk about some pros and cons of, of all of these. Let's start with the uh, manual uh, washing here. The three sink, remember the four sink too as well too. Uh, uh, basically, we're gonna start with the uh, detergent and the, the water and the brushes in, in either the outside left or the right sink, whatever you or your staff finds more convenient if you're left-handed or right-handed uh, to be able to do that, uh, that's up to you. Um, the, the motorized brushes can be more effective, right? They're spinning uh, at, at a good rotation versus uh, uh, different employees that might not uh, scrub as hard as, as each other do or whatever that trying to say. Uh, the middle sink is, is simply going to be for a rinse, right? We want to make sure that the these are set up this way as well too. So uh, a lot of people over the years, I've seen them, they wash, they sanitize, and then they rinse. Well, now you're rinsing the sanitizer off. So we want to make sure that the middle sink is uh, set up for the, the rinsing uh, of the initial soap uh, and then sanitizer in that last sink as well. Okay, uh, then the, the drain board, where are we gonna place this glassware uh, uh, once we're done? So it has a chance to air dry and the sanitizer to, to work. And then also I wanna make sure that I, I am replenishing uh, the sinks, whether it's the soap or the sanitizer or both, you know, several times possibly during the shift, whatever's going to be re required. If I have uh, a heavy wash load, I'm gonna have to uh, change my soaps and sanitizers a bit more often. I want to make sure that I'm using the right uh, types of soaps and sanitizers, right? There's lots of stuff out there uh, to be able to do that, but uh, I want to make sure I'm using the right uh, compatible cleaners and sanitizers. Uh, there are what are referred to as low suds cleaners. If I'm using the motorized brushes, uh, if you don't use those, uh, normal glass cleaner will just foam and foam and foam and you'll have, lo looks like a, a, a 12 inch head of foam on your sink uh, to be able to do that. So we want to make sure that we're using the right with that. Um, you know, and also we, there's a, a mineral solvents right for uh if you have hard water i live in the midwest we have very very hard water and i always use this uh, as well it gives you the glass a nice uh, a clean finish when we're done no different than using a uh, uh, jet dry or something in your home dishwasher right to keep the spots off the glasses as well so depending on your water hardness or softness in your area you may or may not need that uh we certainly do not we would disencourage uh, any kind of a petroleum based or liquid uh, uh, stuff that we would detergent. Um, we use those at our homes and other parts of the bar or restaurant for sure, I'm sure, but uh, we simply, these are not appropriate for uh, a beer clean glassware. They can leave a film on the glass and we don't want that. Uh, bleach, iodine, all these other cleaners, obviously people are, are, are super tuned into sanitation these days it's they always should be but uh, uh, these are not appropriate cleaners uh, to use on that a lot of odors uh, that could be left behind from some of these things when we set up our our three sink manual wash set up uh, number one is i want to clean my sinks all uh, right I'm, I'm trying to clean this glassware so i need to make sure my my sinks or, or whatever i'm using are clean themselves so I wanna uh, uh, possibly make up a little solution of, uh, of the same glass cleaner I'm going to use, uh, uh, just a, a bit of it before I use it and, and make sure that all my sinks are cleaned uh, thoroughly and then rinsed before we uh, uh, start the cleaning process. Uh, very, very common. I see a lot of the, the, the brushes that people use, whether on the uh, uh, mechanical, uh, 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 brush or the the manual brush these brushes get worn down people just keep using them and using them they get uh, worn down they don't have much bristles left i see them uh, caked with uh, soap uh, and different things as well too so want to make sure that those brushes are in good shape they're quite inexpensive to replace so when needs to be we, we should do that uh I also then uh, i want to make sure that uh, my plastic or uh, uh whatever i'm gonna uh, uh put my uh glasses on make sure that's all clean as well too 
And then another thing, I want to make sure that I match the brush shape to the glassware style. A lot of bars and restaurants have many different uh, glassware styles today, which is fantastic. But if I have a very tall glass, uh, a Pilsner type glass possibly, and I have a little short stubby brush, I'm really not going to be able to get in and clean all that as well too. So that's a big uh, uh, a red flag for me when I see and I always look. Uh, to, to someone has the appropriate uh, brushes uh, to be able to clean the glass or that we're trying to clean. So our number one sink, our detergent sink, again, left to right, whichever one is, is most convenient uh, uh, for, for the server or whoever's doing the, the uh, dishes here, we're going to fill it up uh, as to, uh, full with the brushes in it, uh, uh, with uh, a cool water, different uh, chemicals have different temperatures as well too, so make sure you look at that. Uh, but I want to then accurately measure the detergent over the brushes, pour the detergent over so when I start scrubbing, I'm going to get a lot of good soap action as well too. A lot of uh, pre-packaged size, right? One, one, uh, one dose or a tablet sometimes here. Very convenient uh, to be able to do that. Uh, so I want to make sure, and then again, uh, uh, maybe some low suds if I am using a motorized brush and that mineral solvent, I find that works very, very well. Our middle sink, this is one that, that I see people doing uh, possibly incorrect a uh, uh, fair amount of time. Uh, again, I want to make sure that that middle sink is for the rinse, right? And I want to fill that with fresh, cool water. And also then while I'm washing, I want to make sure I have a little bit of water trickling in uh, uh, that thing. So any soap that I drag from the first sink over to the second sink will float on the surface of that water and then get sent down the overflow tube. Uh, people, uh, you do not need to be running the water when you're not doing the dishes. So if you're in an area with, with water issues or shortages, I understand this, but uh, just when we're washing, we want to make sure we're able to do that to get rid of uh, uh, any suds that might be on the surface as well. The last sink, number three here in this uh, thing, the sanitizer sink. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that we reference what uh, whoever sanitizer you're using, there will be some directions on there on the temperature recommendations. I've seen it all over the, the board from hot to medium to, to, to cold as well, too. So make sure you, you, you read your instructions on that there as well. Uh, ideally, uh, I found that the sanitizer, whether it's in a prepackaged uh, dose or a bulk uh, thing where we're using a scoop, it, it when you put it into that sink, it, it likes to clump up and it doesn't want to dissolve as well. So we've used, take a, just a, a couple of pint glasses, uh, fill it up, put your sanitizer in there and just mix it back and forth, kind of shake it up like if you were making a cocktail as well. And what you'll find is that sanitizer will get dissolved uh, uh, much easier and I don't want any uh, big clumps of that stuff in there because then we're not uh, uh, getting the right amount of sanitizer as well too. So want to make sure that uh, any local health codes that we are following there. Um, a lot of times the sanitizer is measured in how many parts per million of, the, of a chlorine based uh, uh, chemical it is. Usually 100 parts per million is very common out there. Uh, to be able to do that. So there are uh, just simple pH test strips that uh, you can use to check this. Again, for initially when we're doing it, I don't want to overdose, but I don't want to, you know, under or after it's worn out, I need to replace it from time to time as well. A lot of the sanitizers actually even come with these pH test strips, so really not much excuse not to be using them. Uh, to be able to do that. And then also the uh, mineral solvent, a lot of these will be encouraged to be put in not only the first sink with the soap, but with the rinse as well too. Um, um, I found very, very uh, good to put half of it in the in with the first sink with the soap and the second half of the mineral in the, the last sink as well. And again, you'll get some uh, uh, really good looking glasses if you have hard water in your area. Now, <clears throat> we're all ready to go with this. so. We're just going to uh, uh, start at the detergent sink. So any you know residual beer or anything that happens to be in the glassware, ice, whatever, we want to make sure we're going to dump that down either in that fourth dump sink or you know in a, a funnel. People will have that or a lot of the overflow tubes. Uh, sometimes they're big enough to do that as well too. I want to be careful not to pour any residual beer or anything back into my sink, right? I'm, I'm, that needs to go somewhere else. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to start, uh, you know, plunge that glass down on the middle brush, usually a three brush setup on these types of things or so. I want to make sure that uh, I use the middle one and rotate that glass several times as well. And that way those outside brushes can, can help clean the rim of the glass as well as the inside and the outsides. Uh, if I'm using the motorized as well, 
<clears throat> I want to use a middle one. Sometimes they have multiple brushes, but go for that middle one as well too. And then I want to make sure again that I push it down far enough that I can clean the bottom of the glass. And again, if the uh, the glass is taller than the brushes are, that that's a difficult uh, thing to do. And then I also like to uh, even the bottom of the glass, the outside bottom, I'll scrape that across the brushes before I go to my rinse uh, sink as well. Uh, rinse sink again, you want to put that glass from the bottom or the heel down in it and then out. We want to make sure it's completely submerged in there. Uh, I want to do that several times. Uh, boy, it's just so common to see people, you know, rinse one once in the, the, the soap, once in the rinse and once in the sanitizer and done uh, as well. Again, red flag for me, but I want to make sure that that, that glass is completely empty and then repeat that a couple times. And then again, also on that rinse sink, right? We're going to have trickle that water uh, to get rid of any soap that we have made, have dragged over from the first sink. Uh, number sink number three, our last uh, uh, part of this, this uh, uh, manual washing is, uh, again, we're going to use that same method here where the, the bottom or the heel of the glass into the water uh, completely submerged, uh, empty the glass and repeat. Uh, a lot of different, the chemical companies I've read that says to do this three or four times. I don't see many people doing that. It's usually once in and once out uh, to be able to do that. Now, critically important that we do place that glass upside down on some sort of a drain board or a, a surface here that's not flat, right? Sanitizer works while drying. It, once it air dries, that's how it works. Uh, the longer it's on there in contact, the better it sanitizes, right? So how many times have you seen folks just again wash rinse sanitize boom pour your glass of beer in there if they're short of glassware or whatever the reason is uh, i need that sanitizer to be on there and to do its job so hopefully we can air let those glasses get air dried before use uh, and again the sanitizer since it is so important we do want to test its strength uh, throughout the, the 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 shift or the the uh, night or whatever it is. Again, if it's getting weak, we can either, uh, uh, we should probably just make up a whole new batch, let that go down the drain and make up another 100 part per million batch as well. Uh, do not uh, set these down on a towel or a bar rag and, and do not dry these glasses with that. I don't know how many old movies or whatever I've seen where the bartender was uh, drying the beer glass with an old gnarly towel here. Not a good idea uh, to be able to do that. And then again, if we can refrain from stacking the glasses or placing in the freezer, uh, stacking the glasses can, can scratch the insides of them. And then these are our uh, uh, nucleation points that we talked about where the bubbles will stick uh, as well too. Obviously people have space issues in that. So I, I do see that, but ideally if we could not stack these, uh, uh, frozen glassware is another issue for another day, but uh, uh, hopefully we can do that. Let's move on to the uh, automated or the machine washing thing. Some people obviously like these. They're, they can be easier, faster uh, to be able to do that. Um, but uh, we have, there's two types. The first one was generally referred to as a low temperature machine. Uh, in low temperature, it might seem high to you, but it is uh, uh, low for the cleaning, but they generally range somewhere 115 to 140 degree water uh, uh, as well. So it's gonna start out with some soap at that water temperature. Uh, the, the lower temperatures, they can be less effective that, you know, for removing heavy soils, lipstick, uh, other heavy films that possibly could be on there as well too. Um, since we are using the, the uh, not quite the hot enough water here, so these are also, they have a sanitizer. Not only did they have a soap uh, a function, but they also have a sanitizer, same as the uh, manual there. But uh, a lot of times, sometimes these, the sanitizer gets turned up too high. Uh, again, that makes sense. Hey, more sanitizer, the better. But that really uh, it can leave a film on the glass. It can leave some odors uh, as well too, smelling like a swimming pool sometimes uh, to do that. Kind of a, a, a nice thing, a pro, I guess, on, on the uh, auto, uh, the low temps is when the, the wash cycle is done, the glasses are, are not smoking hot, right? They can be cooler temperatures uh, as well. Uh, generally, the, these are, are cost less than the high temperature initially, so that might be uh, a reason why somebody might buy this type of machine. Uh, however, they do have a much higher water usage uh, as well. So again, if you're in an area of the country that has uh, experienced drought or water shortages, that might be something to, to keep in mind here. And uh, again, we, since we're uh, letting the machine decide how much detergent and sanitizer 
uh, is being uh, drawn into these, we want to make sure that we can check this as well. So you want to consult with whoever you're getting your chemicals with or even the manufacturer of the uh, dishwasher to make sure that we can test for the strength of our, our soap and sanitizer uh, to do that. And then generally these are going to require chemicals that are uh, you know, not the normal chemicals that we're going to use uh, for the machine, but these are all easily readily available from your um, uh, suppliers. The high temperature uh, machine probably looks kind of similar, but now we're going to get into much higher temperatures uh, of water. 180 degree uh, temperature with these, that's pretty pretty hot, you guys, and that's going to uh, get us to the NSF requirement for sanitation uh, as well. Since I'm using this hot water, there is no sanitizer uh, uh, component for the this type of dishwashing, right? So I don't have to have that scent, worry about any smells or odors from that or film left on the glass as well. Uh, generally, these can cost more to begin with, but they do have a lower cost over time uh, 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 with these. They also will conserve water quite a bit. Uh, the low temps generally use about twice the amount of water that these high temps do because every cycle that a low temp runs, it gets rid of all the water and everything, which sounds good. Uh, but the high temp, the hot water that we rinse with at the very end is now cycled for the next load uh, uh, and then mix with the soap for the wash though. So again, like we talked about on the other one though, we wanna make sure that we are making sure that we're, we're dosing it with the right amount of, of detergent to, to make sure that we're getting the glassware, uh, getting all the soils uh, out of there as well. Um, uh, and also again, re gonna require a chemical formulated for a high temp dishwasher as well. Again, readily available uh, um, from your, your normal suppliers, if you will. Uh, one, one maybe a pro or con on this one is, the glassware usually is really quite hot when it comes out. Obviously, 180 degrees. Uh, they, they, sometimes you can't even touch the glassware for a while. So uh, we need to make sure we have enough glassware, you know, for our busy nights uh, to be able to do that. So that it could be one downfall, but uh, uh, these really work well when they're operation properly and, and uh, up to speed here. Some simple beer clean glassware tests that we can do. These have been around forever. Uh, I've been in the beer business going on 20 years and, and I, these are one of the first things I learned as well too. And <clears throat> they were around a long time before that as well too, right? So the first one's generally referred to as the sheeting test, right? I'm gonna take a glass, uh, 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 just whatever beer glass we're using and get it completely wet, tip it upside down. And if, if the beer is the glass is properly cleaned, uh, kind of like the picture on the right there, you're gonna see that water just, just slide right off, just sheet right off, right? To be able to do that. If I have a, 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 an improperly clean glass, you can see it's kind of sticking to it. Uh, and and that, what that's indicating is there is a film present there of, of, of something as well too, okay? Second one, maybe my favorite one, is what was referred to as the salt test. Uh, simply again, take the a glass that the customer is using, you're using, uh, wet it, and then uh, uh, take a, a, a salt shaker and just shake the heck out of the salt in there, right? Just get all the sides and, and all around there. If, if the beer glass is clean, the salt is gonna you know, stick uniformly, right? Like the picture on the, the right side of the, the screen there uh, as well. If it's not clean, uh, beer clean, then you're gonna have it where the salt will stick some places and won't adhere to other places. Anywhere that it doesn't stick, that's telling me, that's showing us that there's a, a film, a, a possibly greasy film uh, is present. And again, uh, uh, some of those over-the-counter dishwashing things, they, they are a petroleum product. And, you know, it's hard to tell people sometimes, hey, your glassware is dirty when we do use this, uh, these detergents on other things as well, but it's not beer clean. Uh, and then the salt can, you know, fall to the bottom of the glass if it's not sticking to the rim. So uh, almost every bar I've ever been in, and I won't tell you how many that is, uh, I'm sure we can find a salt shaker somewhere. The lacing test, this is just a good one as well too, a nice visual. Uh, uh, that we're looking at. So each time I take a sip of beer, uh, uh, you're, you're going to see a ring or a, a line on the on the back side of the glass as well. We kind of we call that lacing, right? So you should be able to see where each drink or so was going down as well. So you know some of the improperly clean glasses again, the, the foam will just stick in you know splotches different places, or maybe even not at all. I'm sure we've all had uh, a beer like that that it just you know the glass looks clean as a whistle when we're done. No foam sticking to it. 
Um, one of the last things here is just the, the foam, the head retention test, right? Uh, I like a nice collar of foam on my beer. Uh, it's a good visual that does all kinds of good things for the gas and all kinds of good things. But uh, if, if that beer is clean uh, uh, properly, you're going to get that nice lasting thick collar of foam, depending on the beer, I guess, as well, too. You know, the inside of that surface is, is free of bubbles. Uh, um, a lot of times I will see that somebody will pour a beer, I'll watch them, it looks great, but the head just dissipates just, just quick as that. Uh, that tells me that there's something in there that, that's knocked that uh, gas right out of that as well too. So sometimes we can see large, you know, we refer to as fish eye bubbles appear in the foam that just tells us things that are going on. And then uh, again, bubbles clinging to the inside walls of the glass and rise. So again, the reason we use clear glasses so we can see it, right? So I, I wanna make sure that that's all um, uh, nice and clean and good, a good visual and, and know that we have a good clean sanitized glass as well too. Last thing that we'll talk about here today is, is uh, conditioning the glass with a rinser. Uh, a lot of people refer to these rinser trays. Um, they're very, very common, very popular today. I love these things as well too. So, uh, you know, rinsing with water. I'm gonna condition that glass, right? Before we, we put that beer into it. So uh, if glassware has been sitting around, there could be some dust or debris on there. So that could a chance to blow that out. Uh, again, if people are washing, rinsing, sanitizing right away, not giving the glass air time to air dry, uh, the uh, rinsing can, can actually get rid of any extra residual uh, uh, sanitizer as well possibly to do that. And believe it or not, it is easier to dispense beer into a wetted glass than a dry glass, right? Uh, to do that. So uh, if I did have frosted or, or frozen glassware as well, these can help uh, the performance on that. People have trouble with pouring beer into a frozen glass as well. And then again, uh, the, then the rinser may even chill the glass a little bit, right? Whether it came out of the dishwasher or it's a hot bar or whatever, uh, depending on the location that you're at, depending on the time of year, you know, you might even uh, get, I live in the Midwest, we have decent cold water. So you may even get a nice chill on the, the glass of beer as well too from those rinsers. So lots of good reasons to use those. All right, so it's Thursday. Somebody might be going out tonight, maybe tomorrow as things open up more and more. What are we looking for? What do we want to pay for? The first glass or the second glass, right? Uh, I'm going to go for the first one myself uh, as well, and I hope to see that more and more, and I hope you do as well too. So that's the presentation today. Um, does anybody have any questions by uh, chance? Hey Dave, thanks for all that great information on uh, glass cleaning, and uh, like you say, hopefully uh, we can transfer that information to uh, some of our favorite pubs and restaurants to improve the quality of uh, the glassware. Uh, we do have a couple questions here, uh, and if anybody else out there has any, keep typing those in and we'll uh, address them as we go along here. Uh, first one is um, from Doug. It's um, how sanitary is the rinse fountain? I'm assuming, uh, assuming he's referring to the uh, rinser uh, used at some bars particularly when rinsing a glass, which a customer has just used and wants to reuse, uh, particularly with the coronavirus concerns. So obviously never a, never a good idea to reuse a glass, but I understand that people do want to, to reuse their glass for temperature reasons or different things like that. But it, it, the glass rinsers are not to clean it, okay? The glass needs to be properly cleaned and sanitized. Uh, uh, for Corona or anything else as well too. Um, when these rinser trays first started coming out, we got a million questions of, of health inspectors. This is not proper. No, they are not for cleaning the beer. They are for conditioning the glass, right? That glass needs to be properly cleaned and we want to discourage people from reusing glassware anytime, but especially uh, today. Thanks, Doug. Uh, we've also have a question here from Chuck. Chuck asks, uh, rumor has it that three compartment sinks will go away and under counter dish machines will replace all of them. Any word on that? Uh, I don't want to tell anybody anything uh, not the right. I do not know that. I, I know some municipalities. We have an office in California and uh, uh, it, it, it's a requirement. I believe it's code out there. Forgive me if I'm wrong that it's a four sink, uh, you know, to have that dump sink. I have not heard anything on manual washing going away. Uh, if anybody else has, we can certainly talk about that. Sorry, Chuck. 
Okay, great. This one's from uh, Anonymous. Uh, any flavor attributes you'd be looking for if a beer glass wasn't properly cleaned? Well, again, if uh, you know somebody has lemon scented joy and uh, they're using it in that home or they're using it, or uh, believe it or not, I've had a dozen people tell me, by golly, I went to Costco and bought 55 gallons of this soap and I'm going to use it, right? Uh, so that might smell nice and good to you when you're cleaning something else, but uh, you know, I don't want any scented uh, uh, chemical or cleaners uh, uh, for that. Uh, we did talk about bleach and iodine as well too. Obviously people are uh, uh, concerned about sanitation and those are great sanitizers, but they're just not good. We don't want to be leaving any residual. I want to, 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 to smell and taste the beer the way the brewer intended without any uh, external odors, if at all possible. Okay, great. Any other questions there anybody has? Go ahead and type those in real quick. We'll give you a couple more seconds here. Okay, I don't see any more questions coming in there, Dave. Again, uh, thanks to all the participants that tuned in today. Dave, thank you for all the great information. Uh, everybody stay safe. Appreciate uh, you tuning in for these and there will be more. We'll let you all know when the next one's coming about. Yeah, Thanks I just again. wanted to second that is just watch your, uh, however you were alerted to this one, we'll, we have a few more of these in the pipe and we'd love to have you uh, join us in. Thank you. Thanks again.